Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today's video is going to be my thoughts on Counter-Strike 2 so far and essentially a recap of the game and it's, you know, full release that's been out for about two months now. We recorded this once already, uh, except as soon as we recorded this, there was a massive update to the game uh, and it changed quite a bit on how I feel about the game. So we had to redo this entire video. So thanks, Val. So to start things off, uh, some of you know and some of you might not know, uh, I was invited to playtest CS2 in early January, if I remember right. Quite frankly, I was just really surprised. Not really something you expect to see. I know people know that I have uh, communication at times with Valve. It's not really as much as people think. It's really, I'm just a glorified bug reporter. But uh, yeah, I was, I was really surprised by getting invited and I was very excited to play test it so if you guys are kind of interested in my visit to seattle and what it was like and who was there and kind of exactly what happened we already kind of talked about that uh in greater detail in a couple past videos that will have you know appended at the top of the video so actually play testing the game in seattle uh my initial thoughts were i mean graphically it was beautiful to look at there was a lot going on though with the game it was really far from even what we have now uh the the audio was super scuffed the first day and then they actually had to remix the entire audio engine overnight after we had play tested for 10 hours to really try to help us identify other issues within the game because the audio was at a point where we were struggling to kind of figure out what was wrong or what felt weird in other aspects of the game but you know after the audio was essentially adjusted and we were getting used to the sprays there were other things as well one of the things being movement well we were play testing the bigger issue that a lot of us were running into is the character models themselves had so much movement to them that it created a much bigger issue in our eyes when we were playing which some of these character models i wish you guys could have seen them it was like a cartoon almost some of them when when you would get peaked it was like slender man or like like a rubber band peak there, it was crazy how much movement these models had. So stuff like that, you know, the play test, there was a lot of flaws. There were tons of flaws. That was the whole point of us being there, right, in January. Uh, and when I was first playing it, I was loving it. I was excited. But in the back of my mind a little bit, I would be lying if I wasn't kind of like, ah, oh, this kind of feels like we're a ways off. They didn't tell us when the game would be coming out. They didn't tell us when the beta would be. We had no idea, even the tick rate or we didn't know it was sub tick when we were playing. They gave us jump binds and the jump binds all worked, but it all kind of felt weird and we couldn't, there was no way they'd let us see the tick rate. There were even certain maps like we didn't get to see Inferno, for example. Stepping away and like looking at it and trying to be objective about it. So I'm always a glass half full type person and seeing what they were able to do just with the audio overnight made me at least have faith and confidence in them going forward when the game whenever it did fully come out or whether the beta, I knew that changes could be done quickly and efficiently and that they knew what they were doing. When the beta came out, my initial thoughts and feelings were just, holy shit, it's out. And then immediately it's only dust two. In the play test, we had played Mirage, we played Overpass, we played Nuke, we played dust two, and we played Ancient. We didn't have all of the maps, but we had a lot more than just dust two. So I was, I was a bit, let down but i would be lying if i didn't just say i was super excited to be playing the beta obviously the beta had tons of like big boy bugs you know some of them like you know notoriously people think i cheated now because of the clip that i posted with the console command and you could pick guns up when you're dead but the bigger issues right were kind of like how the spray feels the peaker's advantage the movement i, I feel like those issues that we were all kind of dealing with and those game breaking things or diffusing while you were dead kind of mass those during the beta where I don't really remember being that frustrated with a lot of the game and that I think that sums up how I feel about the beta is excited and just kind of able to overlook everything in the game because I was just happy that it was out that being said it doesn't mean I don't acknowledge that those things were there <laughs> but uh really excited about the game overall i think it's important to mention that i know a lot of people are upset that they can't play csgo anymore and i don't blame you i think cs2 is lacking a lot of features there's a lot of things to 
to want out of CS2 that just aren't there. But that being said, as somebody that played, you know, one of the worst versions of Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike Swords, I really am glad that they don't have both the games live at the same time. This might be a very unpopular opinion, but I'm very happy that they didn't continue to basically have CSGO live because I feel like it would have absolutely separated the community and made the progression and hurt the progression of Counter-Strike 2 in the future of CS2. I really hope people never experience what it was like, like I did with Source of 1.6 with a modern Counter-Strike. I think even right now, you know, I'm going to say the big bad word, Valorant. I think you can kind of, in North America at least, you can really feel you know, the, the split and the divide already. I'm happy there isn't another version of that. So now let's talk about the initial release. Let me just say this right off the bat. I didn't think they were gonna actually fully release it. You know, people kept coming to my chat, Flom, I know you know, you know, when's it coming out? I had no clue what was coming out and I was dead certain that it was just gonna be like essentially an open beta where they were gonna roll out more features, test more things. We didn't even have, like, we didn't have so many features that even when the game fully went live, it was like, what the, what the heck is going on here? Obviously what I do, I'm inherently, I feel like biased to be positive. Uh, and I recognize that, but that just doesn't change how I feel. I mean, I was excited as fuck that the game was out, but also that faded pretty quickly. I don't hate the game. I'm still playing it 10 hours a day. I just immediately, you start to see like, man, there's, this is it, huh? Like, I mean, I'm having fun, but like, we don't have like community servers really working. The server browser scuffed. You basically killed all the mods off the rip. Obviously things like danger zone, arms race, you know, uh, scouts knives. I realized that those are probably very small parts of the community, but those are still part of the community. There's still people that are getting on every single day and playing the game and they no longer have access to that stuff. Like the KZ surf stuff is, as somebody that likes and enjoys both, it's been horrible. I, I'm just barely getting to like KZ right now. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that's a climbing mod. You know, it's just, it's just a mod where you jump and you climb things and it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to kill time and it has a huge community around it and same with surfing. And right now it's still just not there. It's it saying it works is just a lie. It, it technically works, but it just doesn't. And that's even now, it's two months. I feel like Valve really dropped the ball in that sense. And I really wish that's one of my biggest complaints for sure about the game. And then obviously I think for a lot of people right now, Premiere is just, it could have been so good. And right now it is just, it's just bad. I hate saying it because I think what makes Premiere feel even worse is the fact that we can now all see how good it can and should be and it's right there and it's just not i think a big part of that is the cheating situation but i think also something that gets overshadowed by the cheating is i think the the system itself is still just not good the fact that five stacks are playing in solo queues and i benefited from that but also i never wanted to solo queue because it created an environment where i would play and people weren't the same rank as me like they weren't they weren't even close to my skill level and that isn't just an ego i don't know what was going on but if i solo queued i'm dropping 30 kills or more and it didn't feel good it just felt like i was smurfing it wasn't engaging at all i play counter-strike to be competitive i want games to engage me in that way stomping people for some people might be fun but for me it was incredibly underwhelming so i'd have to five stack to play with people that i obviously at least feel like are comparable to my skill level but then you run into the problem where you're just kind of stomping through people so before the cheating problem really even took off some of you that watch me regularly stream know this but if you do not i stopped playing premiere a week or two before they even started updating premiere and before the cheating problem kind of like really felt like I, it ramped up and that's just because the games were not competitive winning 100 points losing 500 every game when you're not losing and that's not just happening to me on the high end that's happening to people on the low end of the ranking and that's not just lost streaks it just happens but what makes it feel worse is the leaderboard actually feels like it would be fun if it worked the way that it was supposed to i love how the veto system works it was something that in seattle i mentioned to them because it was already in csgo and i told them i was like 
this is great. You guys should use this. And, you know, obviously that interview came out of them being surprised that Premiere was so popular. Also just kind of goes to show that maybe they missed the mark with Premiere overall. And I think to kind of wrap up my initial thoughts on on that, I know that was pretty long winded. Excited the game was out, but man, do I just feel like they missed a really big opportunity to just capture matchmaking again. And it feels like we just don't have a good matchmaking system once again in Counter-Strike. And it's beyond underwhelming. With talking about the initial release now, let's get into how I feel about the programs that I've watched so far uh, and kind of basically the key takeaways. I will say I like MR12 a lot. I hope they stick with MR12. I just also hope though that they continue to monitor it and adjust the economy of the game because the fact that double saves can still happen, especially for that CT side, it just feels bad. And watching it in pro games feels worse because these games, I feel like a half, just somebody's 6-0 sometimes on T side and you're just like, what just happened? But I would also be lying if I didn't say, I love that the games are shorter. I really do. You know, watching a BO5 that could potentially go seven hours or more, just if I didn't have a Twitch chat next to me to flame and call stupid, I don't know if I could watch it um, on my own. We still got a lot more games to watch and a lot more tournaments to kind of see, you know, where it really goes. We've only had a few tournaments so far. So we've talked about the initial release, the beta, the, the, you know, the play test in Seattle, pro games. Let's talk about now. Game's been out about two months. I was originally in the first video talking about how much I still despise the sprays, but with the most recent update, it feels much better. So for those of you that don't know, Valve made an update to make the tracers of your spray match closer to your actual spray uh, in the server. We did make a video on it, but in case you did not know, your tracers on your gun when you shoot in Counter-Strike are not exactly where the bullets go. And the most recent update, they changed two things. They made the sprays basically closer to your actual tracers. So when you're spraying your gun and you're seeing the bullets come out of your gun, it's not 100%, but it's much closer than where it was before. And then the other thing is now your gun is going to animate more in line with when you think it's going to. Your op's going to shoot when you think it's going to shoot. Your AK is shooting when you, when you click. And after that update, I think spraying especially got tremendously better. So going forward, you know, and, and kind of adding on to current state, how I feel right now with the gameplay, I think it's pretty good. The most recent update, like I just said, tremendously helped the game. The spray feels better, but there's definitely some things right now that I still feel like are big issues. My personal number one issue, they have to continue to tweak the peaker's advantage. For those of you that don't understand, let's just say one person is standing still and one person is about to peek and come around the corner. The person that is peeking and coming around the corner has an advantage on the person standing still holding the angle. This is true in every online FPS. This is not a CS problem only. This, is, this happens everywhere, okay? However, there's, there's degrees to it. And the degree in which the peeker right now has the advantage, it's too much, it's unbearable to the point where my entire gameplay, when I'm playing against higher level people and I'm playing against people that really sweat Counter-Strike, they're playing just as much as I do, if not more, the entire game revolves around abusing peeker's advantage. That's always been the case to a point, but the way it is in CS right now, it's too extreme and my number one issue because it just affects every aspect of the game. After Peeker's advantage, I think it's got to be movement and jump. I talked earlier in the video about how KZ servers are kind of back. Now that I've been KZing, I can't unfeel the jump problems. Uh, you know, Launders is tweeting every single day about it. The jumping right now alone and just getting onto like a box feels so... I think the best word to use is inconsistent. A crowd favorite and my own because I can't... I can't stand having it uh, move so much as we need Bob back. I would love to have Bob back. It, it sounds stupid, but please. Bob's behind me, but I need it in game as well, okay? I, I really do. And then as we touched on earlier with the pro games, I think CT economy right now in MR12 just doesn't feel great. It just feels like the game can slip out of out of control with a pissed around loss and winning the first round and losing the second. And next thing you know, it's like six, one, seven, one, and your, your buys are just 
bad and they don't feel good and you might have to double save it just to get it right and it's just and, and next thing you know that that's the half anti-cheat is just an easy one to farm likes on this video it's a bigger issue than probably all of this you know i was talking a little bit more about gameplay for this list but i just wanted to mention again because i know people are like you know on it about the cheaters and it's totally fair i don't want you to think that i'm just glossing over it it's just it's such a problem that i feel like i'm beating a dead horse if i continue to mention it uh uh, and then last but not least man can we get a server browser that doesn't alt tab me like what in the fuck it's 2023 and i click server browser that looks like just a little globe with a map like what is the logo first off and then second it all tabs me i don't know what's happening it makes me i'm 31 it makes me feel like i'm 50 because it just feels so i it, it, none of it makes sense to me. I don't know. It just makes me feel old. I, I so that, That'll kind of wrap up my overall feeling so far. So let's just do the TLDR of everything. Initial play test me in Seattle. Loved it. Had a great time with the gang. Obviously a once in a lifetime type of experience. I can't believe I got to go. That being said, the game was in a pretty early on state to where there were a lot of bigger flaws with it where I never really feel like I got to sink my teeth into it. And I think partly that's just natural with play tests like that because I'm playing for two days instead of 10 hours a day for weeks on end. Going to the beta, so excited I get to even talk about what I did in the play test, but it was just us two to roll out and it felt really bare bones for a long time. And then kind of leading into eventually the initial release, I just felt like it was early. I didn't expect it as a Counter-Strike fan and as a streamer of the game and as somebody that wants to make content around the game, I'd be lying if I wasn't saying I was hyped about the release no matter what. I would have been no matter what. But that immediately quickly faded when you start you start seeing all the flaws. And then current state, I think the gameplay is actually really getting there. I really do feel like it's getting into a good spot. Doesn't mean we're done. We're far from it. And premiere slash matchmaking just it just feels like we're back to where we were with CSGO with a bad matchmaking system. I hope they just accept it and not scrap it, but just like accept that it's absolutely messed up right now and make dramatic changes to it because I think we all see how it can be so good and we just want it to be that way. All right, guys, it's finally that time. The best part of the video, the time where I, you know, stop yapping. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. And last but not least, talk about in the comments below your favorite thing or your least favorite thing in Counter-Strike. I imagine there's going to be some least favorite things. Until then, see y'all in the next video. Later.